How is it going? It's Alex, I mean Johnny Carson on the late, running late show. <laughs> What's up? So, uh, we had to get, um, or rather, my wife had to get a new TV. And, um, so today I was waiting around and we got this TV that I am not worthy of. She returned an old one and got this one. So, we have a big TV now. Um, so, what's everybody up to? How's it going? Uh, I know I usually stream at 4.30, but like I said, uh, the guys actually came and they were, like, installing it because she got some, like, maintenance warranty package thing and was able to do that. But, now I'm here and you're here and we're all here together and I hope everybody's having an excellent Friday or if you're in Australia, Saturday, uh, hope it's going well. So, what is going on? Hey, almost early. <laughs> yeah, almost. So, I've got a special treat here. A Dr. Pepper cream soda. You're gonna love that. Um, I also have a treat for y'all, which is... Mm, 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 some stuff to feed some different critters. Um, you know, actually, I tried to collect these, and right now, we don't have a very good, uh, showing. <laughs> There's not a whole lot out there. So, I figured I'd give you guys an update on this tank, and I also decided that I'm gonna enter Heiko Blair's, um, biotope contest. So, there's that. That's kind of fun. But, I kind of wanted to show you guys the nitty gritty issues with this new scape of mine if you guys have anybody anything any subject you want to talk about feel free and if you're trying to address me at symbol and my name or at the secret history living in your aquarium would be great anthony the aquaman will welcome to the channel welcome to the stream buddy um, I hope you feel right at home. Let's turn around and look at some fish, even if they're not from the song. Hey, look, the bent, lo the bent spine loach is out. So, what's wrong with this loach? Why is he so bent? Why is he flirting with a Siamese algae eater like they're going to have babies together? Well, I don't know the answer to the second part of that question, but... The first part of the question about the bent spine is all the males of this species from Lake Inlay have a bent spine. And that lake was an isolated lake through evolution. Hey, here's his lady. That's that's why he was showing off. He was uh, he was trying to make eyes at the lady in the tank. We'll, we'll get her to move. Hold on, I'll put the toothbrush in here. Oh, she moved. But, oh, she's so quick. And, uh, they're a really fun little fish. I like those loaches a lot. Um, they come out more at night, but they're kind of similar to pandagaras in the way they behave. Like them a lot. And, uh, the, it's not like guppies with the bent spine, actually. It's that they have some gene that they had a bent spine 100,000 years ago or whenever. And... Apparently, it just wasn't an issue um, for them in that lake. There aren't a whole lot of predators. Now, you guys probably notice a little something going on. Uh, hey, right on, Lady Diane. You're following me around? Um, or maybe you're following Craig around. I don't know. But, you know, a fish that never gets talked about in our hobby, I feel like, are these gouramis. And they're called thick-lipped gouramis. And this is full-grown. Uh... This is full grown. They're awesome little fish, and they they kind of change colors. Um, let's let's turn the setting on this light all the way up. I'm all the way up, all the way up. That's so it'll stop strobing on us. Um, and uh, yeah, with guppies, you definitely don't want to spread the bent gene. However, with these fish, there is no group of them that doesn't have that gene, because they only exist in that lake. 
Um, and they get around just fine. It's not like a calcium deficiency or anything. It's just like a weird defect that evolutionarily, I guess, God or, you know, Mother Nature was like, oh, no, it's, it's all good. Let's just leave it like that. Um, but I've started ripping out the Monte Carlo, which definitely caused nitrates to, to pile up quicker. So I need to be doing water changes like daily right now. And the other thing is, you guys can see all this algae. This is all because all these plants are the first round of growth. And um, they're really growing quickly. Like, I can clean a surface of algae in this tank and have it back in 24 to 48 hours, this much algae. Like, I just cleaned out this corner and I, and I can get, you know, gobs of algae off of it. And what I've been doing with that algae is taking it and putting it in the ponds outside so that there is some food for my Daphnia and uh, also for the little critters uh, known as Cyclops. And, uh, you know, I could nuke this with Excel or something like that, but uh, like Flourish Excel, and that would melt away all of the algae, but it wouldn't take care of my my problem of the fact that I have too much of bio load in here. Not in fish terms, but in just terms of, we used a lot of tissue culture in here, you can see a lot of the, the, the plants are doing well, but some of them are also dying, and when they die like that, they release all sorts of things, including carbonic acid, and nitric acid, and tannins, and all sorts of stuff, and when that builds up in the water, it's super, super uh, tempting for the algae then to come in. Now, what I wanted to show you guys is that the erythromicrons are in here, even though they're hiding back there in the tall plants. There's one right there. Here he comes. Um, here he comes again. Actually, that's a female. Um, and they're so, so notorious for having a bent spine. Uh, but hopefully this group doesn't. So far I haven't seen any of that. Uh, or getting the big hunchback and then also, um, do I remove any loose leaves? Yeah, any leaves I see like this one back here, uh, I'll try to remove. I'll kind of just comb through everything and also knock any, like you'll see there's, there's leaves right here. And, um, I mean, here's Garami poop right here. <laughs> so any of it that's loose, if, if I had more flow going, it would help mitigate this. But what would happen is I would get blackbeard or uh, other like tuft algae. And um, I don't want to deal with that either. So I'd rather deal with this filamentous algae. It's way easier to take care of. It seems... It's very easy uh, when you have a tank to feel like, oh my gosh, it keeps coming and coming and it's never going to go away. But really after you, uh, you know, clean some surfaces like the rocks and the, the sticks, like that stick is a big part of it. The, the fact that I have three big chunks of wood in here is a part of it. Hey, look, now she's back there. What's she doing, silly loach? Um, yeah, it's a big part of it. And I think I'm going to get another filter, a bigger filter for it. Uh, because they're just, uh, it, it's just not running enough water through here. Now, also, we've got all the CPDs that I bred. Uh, if you guys recall, I bred them down in here, and they're, um, they're doing good. They're, uh, they're hiding up there where it's really warm, and my Bacopa, which initially grew right up and out of here and was beautiful and had flowers and all sorts of stuff coming off of it which i was like super thrilled about um it's kind of doubling back on itself and falling back into the water in a few cases and it's not really putting its energy into uh making a good root structure which is frustrating um it's kind of half immersed half out of water except for this one and this one will start blooming again soon um so we'll see hey for sure what's up and screaming fly productions what's up yeah the amanos are another thing that i could add in here that would definitely clean it up but i'm trying to keep it all to myanmar species and here you can see the glow light daniels they're doing their thing they're just swirling around um but yeah so part of it is that 
I need to run with full CO2 fertilizers and light for like four hours a day. And then I need to put a tarp, a blanket over this tank and then get rid of all the um, extra bits of leaves and stuff. And then I just need to like, there's no, no good way around it really. But I just need to do this, you know, and literally pull off some of the algae too. The, the thing is with, with filament algae, it's actually easier to wait until it gets thick and then to literally just pull like chunks of it off all together, almost like spaghetti noodles on a fork or something. Um, but that stuff is all going to be great feed for my, um, for my Daphnia outside. And these little rosy loaches, they're also really great. The males are kind of this champagne color, and then they'll turn like a bright peach or orange if they're in a good mood. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, this gourami always is doing this at the top. I was worried about it needing oxygen maybe, but then I read a little anecdote online that they just like that. They just blow bubbles. It's like practicing making a nest or something. Uh, and so the males are very likely to do that, just sit at the top and do their little thing. Um, so that's kind of the drill with here and then like i said i'm getting rid of the last bits of monte carlo out of here i was going to try to do a carpet with it and it was actually working pretty well but you know it's a biotope and monte carlo is from the caribbean and also uh south america and central america so it doesn't really make sense to be in here it just looks cool um so we're going to take that out, and it's going to be all species that are endemic to the Shan River Valley uh, in here. And again, here's that big old female loach. I wish you could see how red her tail is. Let's see if we can get her to come out. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, her tail's like a blood red color, uh, and the males are that way too. And it, they, she just scared all the little erythromicrons. And there are also rummy nose uh, rasboras in here also. But they're still pretty young. And so they've, uh, they've hidden. They've been kind of hanging out real hidden. Uh, so hopefully they come out and uh, make an appearance soon. I also wanted to uh, kind of update you on some of the... Uh, rare epistos that I've got at the moment as well as the fact that I moved this whole uh, over half of the school of the glow lights I moved them down here uh, and this is a tank with no filter the heater's not on right now um, there's no air stone or anything in it right now um, and this is just totally a basically a wall stead tank at this moment without a deep substrate so that's kind of interesting in that um, I was going to do a deep substrate, but it's only about two inches of, of soil in there and then some rocks on top. And I'm just surprised at the load that it's able to carry. Part of it, I think, is that I had a bunch of shrimp in here. Another part of it is that it is kind of completely shaded from natural sunlight with the cinder blocks blocking off the light. But, I mean, then, then these Danios move around all the water really well. I mean, this is just what they do all day long is they, they're just full of energy, which is kind of wild because I don't, like, feed them a ton or anything. You'd think they'd need a ton of food all day long to maintain this level of en energy. That and, I mean, if you guys have been to your local pet store, you guys probably know that most glow light Danios don't look like this. These are the, the ones from the Czech Republic that were straight out of uh, a wild collection point and um, just look really beautiful. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, your average fish keeper, you say uh, your daughter's tank has a bacopa out of it six inches. That's great. It has that beautiful like little purple or blue or white or yellow, it depends on the species, uh, flower. And usually it's a soft little blue one that looks great. Um, so let's see here. Angie McGee, I got a Botia Zebra Loach the other day. Yeah, those are cool. Uh, those are really cool. I'm thinking about kind of, um, yeah, grow, grow them immersed, your average fish keeper. They're great. Um, they're a really pretty one immersed. Um, let's see here. I'm getting my sleeve wet. Wow, I'm way behind, aren't I? Um, Craig, what's up? What did I miss? Oh, thanks, man. Oh, you just spelled my name wrong, that's all.
so in any case, this tank, um, we've got some cool Epistos in here. Their color isn't showing as bright, but I can post some pictures of it. You can see, like, the camera does weird things with the light. Um, but we've got males with the little dots around their face. I think this group is actually um, three males and then a female who's hiding somewhere. She's over there somewhere. But she's like bright bright canary yellow and has like a little mask like she's a bank robber now they all kind of have a little mask but it doesn't continue up into the face as well they've got that line on the top of their head but not really like a full mask over their forehead whereas she has that over her forehead um this one's questionable i don't know that one almost looks female with the face but the spots around the face make it hard to tell but none of them have the the rot punkt uh, a pisto like trademark of the uh, red spots, which is what they're supposed to have, um, which makes it a little trickier. Um, I kind of wonder what collection point they're from or what the deal is, but some of them are getting really yellow and a metallic blue. It's just really hard to see on, on camera uh, unless you get the light just right, and then it's really cool because they've got these orange eyes uh, and this like powder blue metallic body and then uh, black a black stripe on their little mohawk of a dorsal fin so they're um, they're a fun one but you know they have super quickly eaten all my shrimp and I mean like all my shrimp that were in here there were literally 150 to 200 Malawa shrimp in here and I don't even see one anymore. And they've only been here, what, a week and a half or something? So uh, I, there's that. Also, they've got these cool iridescent spots on their um, on their anal fin that are just like, they're like iridescent, but they're also clear. So it reflects light that comes through it really well. It's kind of interesting. So like this one doesn't have it. I think I think this is the female actually. Um, with the, she's got a little line on her forehead. It's kind of hard to see here. Um, I'm trying to see if, is there something up with the camera that, that, um, is making things less, um, can you point out a few plants that would be endemic to India? Um, like pea puffer country? Yeah, totally, man. Um, uh, I definitely can. So, um, oh, there's the big female. She's right there. She's big yellow got a big black stripe on her eye <laughs> anyhow um so plants native to kerala india you're gonna have a lot of the indica um uh, and also bangladesh uh you're gonna have the these these plants here this rotala rotala bangladesh which is kind of like a soft purple or violet underneath the leaves real subtle kind of metallic almost color changing and then green leaves and then, actually, uh, Crips Boralis is one that can be found in southern India, uh, as well as the Bangladeshi border, which, uh, that's a big range, I know, but, uh, and then all these, uh, Macrandra, uh, and Indica Rotalas are all actually found there, too. So you've got all these, um, any, E-N-I-E, that have little thread needles, they're found, uh, in that general region of the world and then um the the plant that's super common well other than i mean hair grass grows in on every continent there's a form of it there's like 15 species so you can always throw hair grass in a tank and be like look it's a biotope it's accurate um but really what's what's going to be endemic and very popular hey little little lazy dude um, is going to be these kind of crypts, the axelrod and um, some of the wenti and uh, that stuff is, is definitely going to be a part there. But really, um, again, we've got more rotala, the mini butterfly, that's another one that you can find there. And then you're also going to have, if we go into the other room and we look, um, I'm, I don't know how well they're going to be doing, but we'll take a look. Um, all your plants, like, yeah, like these Loganandra Meboldi's. This is a Loganandra Meboldi red. 
um, and it's just named that because it shimmers red. And in the right condition, these things are incredible. And then there's Loganandra carolensis, um, which is named after the Kerala region of India. Um, and then oh, Limnophilia aromatica is another one right here. And the Hippodrodes uh, variety is another one. Um, over here, what, what else do we have? Um, oh, Bacopa is another one that is native to India. And it's actually used as uh, a medicinal medicine. Um, so that's kind of cool. And then I'm just seeing if I have any... Uh, Asian water fern or anything like that up here still. Um, Nubius, that's Africa. Moss, um, I don't even know what kind of moss this is. It looks like it's either willow or java. It looks like it's just java that's got highlight. Um, and then, uh, what else do we have that would be from India? Um, I don't know where the wisteria is from originally, honestly, but I know that this little plant here is another Indian plant. Um, a lot of the delicate rotalas are Indian, uh, which, yay, I think that's fun. But yeah, um, India has a lot of selection of these broader-leafed uh, Lagunandras. Um, of course, my favorite plant in the entire aquarium. Get out of this corner, guys. Ow. He literally got me with his spike. Get out of the corner, guys. Come on. I don't know why they're huddled up there. It's, And i got to move this heater, which, you know, they sent me a heater, and it works great as a heater, but this thing is freaking huge. Like, you would need a real big tank to need this heater, this size and layout and everything. I don't think I'm going to give it, like, a good rating. Um... I don't know. I'm giving it time just because I, I like to see how things work. And it's got this, like, alert feature in case it stops working or gets too hot. But, again, down here, this is my very favorite plant in my whole collection, which is Loganandra Meboldi Silver. And if you can see it, it has a silver metallic shimmer to it that is identical to, like, a Bucephalandra's shimmer. Um, so the fact that I have this heater out of the water, um, that much, it starts beeping and it alerts me right here and it tells me in real time what's going on. Whoops, smash. And it's all waterproof, which is nice, but it's got like an eco mode and then it's got a fast heat mode and a standby mode, which standby I think just means not doing F all with anything, <laughs> but, um, you can change it. You can change it by scrolling and pushing down on this wheel. It's like a iPod Apple wheel. Um, and when you do that, if it, if it was doing, uh, forget all mode, then, uh, you can put it into fast heat and it'll heat up real hot. Um, it gets to about 110 degrees, I noticed, with my heat gun. So that is hot enough that I feel like a fish could get heat stroke if it hung out there. And a lot of fish, if the tank's cold in general, they kind of want to hang out and get that, like, quick heat. But it's not necessarily good for them to do so. Also, tomorrow is our big plant auction in our club. And so, um, I'm going with a couple people to the plant auction and... This is all plants that are going to get cut for the the auction. So they're all going to get cut down to like here. And it's pretty much solid plants all the way back there. This tank is pretty much solid plants. Um, they're going to have to learn to live with the duckweed though if they want my plants. Um, so there's that. Okay. Let me try to catch up with the chat and see what I've been neglecting. Not all vari uh, variants, locations of Alocrina pistos get the red dots. The name comes from the first one they found. It had red dots in between the scales. Hey, thanks, Mick. I really appreciate that, buddy. Uh, I can always count on you to give me the good info on... Uh, 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 the epistos and dwarf cichlids and stuff. Okay, so... Let's take a look at the, uh, not at my mouth and my janky teeth. 
Let's take a look at the other ones. I think this is a female. Mick, correct me if I'm wrong. I would love to know. Um, and then I think this is a male. They have these cute little bulgy eyes. These are the um, kaites, and I really like them. This female is real aggressive if that's what it is, though. She's a real aggressive go-getter. Uh, this one has spangling by the face um, of iridescence, and then it's fin. It has red uh, dots and um, a little bit of yellow on the tip. And then they all have yellow and blue, beautiful little um, paired fins and anal fin. Here we got a good example um, of, I think, a female maybe. Um, it, I mean, I, my guess at first was male, but the rounded head makes me wonder if it's a female here too because um, she's, she's kind of got the mask and she's kind of doing the all yellow thing. But this is one where the females don't actually turn that different than the males like they they don't yellow up way different than the, the males do which makes it um even harder for me to understand what in the heck is going on in my tank um okay mick says this is why all the new incoming wild alacrina types are called uh cf alacrina uh cf is latin for similar to and species affinity um is probably or vice versa yeah awesome um let's see here uh angie says out of all the fish you've been keeping at the moment do you have a favorite mine are my chocolate garamis just babies so cute and curious um you know i it's a that's a hard one uh, it changes from time to time for me um but i do really like i i yeah i honestly do really like mine uh my uh V Valenti uh, Garamis, these guys, the the females are super pretty with rainbows on them, and then the males are also still really pretty with like a burgundy and blue piping on them. That that's neat. Um, I still always will love, and I will always love my little gobies. They're getting old though. They only live two or three years usually, and I'm worried that they're at the end of their line. Um, see this female? Again, like pretty much monthly, they're super fat and ready to have babies. Uh, and it's just so sad because they have their milk, they put their egg out into the world, and it just becomes little lost dreams floating like slime in the tank. Okay. Did I make that? I was going to make it like touching and then I made it gross. Um, but I also love this fish. Uh, very interesting. The Enigmatochromius Lucan's eyes. Uh, this is the female and she moves in the... She moves in mysterious ways. She moves like upside down and like contorts herself to eat algae and bugs out of weird areas on in the tank. And then her male um, pair... He is real stoic and just kind of ambush predator. Uh, he'll eat anything that swims by, but to the point where it's almost a problem because he won't go get food very frequently, which is a little frustrating. Like, I, I could see him starving over guarding the nest, where she is not that loyal. She'll go and get food but right now they're not in their spawning colors if you guys have been lucky enough to see these fish in their spawning colors you'll know she turns like electric blue and purple and it's just beautiful um this is another interesting plant that i have and i actually need some help identifying it this is supposedly a crypt but it has this crazy rhizome that looks like a grub and i don't know what it is it was given to me as, quote-unquote, a real rare crypt, bro, uh, by an old store I used to work for. Um, and I didn't, at the time, I figured, oh, I know most of the crypts, so I'll just, okay, cool. And then I realized, wow, I have no idea what that crypt is. Uh, let's see here. Let me get down where you guys are. Um, can you put electric blue cars with Kerbenzis? Yeah, you can. They're... Not well, cars having babies might be an issue. Um, 
If she would already be guarding the eggs, she'd be yellow and show a belly to the male weakness to trigger the male to help defend the territory. Oh, interesting. Um, Mick, yep, female. Okay, cool. Um, I appreciate it, Mick. Yeah, she's... I think she might actually kind of be thinking about this as her as her territory because we've got... Um, there's actually two females that hang around, but she's real defensive of that territory. Uh, and I'm trying to, like, whittle it down to, like, what makes them different. But I'm noticing that the pectoral fins or the paired fins, I guess they're not pectoral, they're um, pelvic fins, I guess. Um, they're, uh, they're black on, I think, the females, and whereas the males not so much. Uh, and then the males seem to have, like, a red color on the top of their crest or their dorsal fin. Uh, but it's really hard to tell because they color up all different ways. This one looks like, oh, very female-esque body. And this one looks like, oh, very male-esque body. But some of them are a lot more ambiguous. That seems like a female body. Um, that seems like a male body. But then I'm like, well, is that a female, Mick? Is this a female right here? Um, right I, I assume with the face banding that I mean in other species I would assume female but then it's got the like the braveness and the audacity of a male so that is what's confusing me about these kaites looks like one male three females yep female okay all right cool so all right thanks I'm getting better at the episto game uh so the other thing I moved was the Crebenzis. If you saw my uh, bloodworm collecting and feeding video, uh, you know that the Crebenzis are in here. This is a man-made uh, um, variety that is called uh, the White Crebenzis. It's just the Nigerian red, but they've um, bred them so that like some of the upper regions, instead of being like canary yellow they're more of a like white or cream color i don't know if i love it but they were like two dollars at the store each so for four bucks i got a pair and she's got that beautiful purple belly still she's starting to work on the eggs in that belly you can see she's starting to build them up and then we've got the the weird mean grumpy fish um the blue lip buffalo cichlid and his female uh companion who hate the world uh and then we've got these fish too um which are a new addition uh just the other day uh three were or four were brought by and i was told i cannot handle these fish anymore they are too violent for me well what they are is haplochromous babies i think um they look like lake victorian cichlid uh haplochromous babies uh but i don't know what color morph they're gonna be so that'll be interesting uh, also, all the bettas that are in here are doing uh, really well. They're looking amazing. Uh, this female's looking killer. Um, this this one uh, started getting the... I thought it was a disease at first, but it's black lines on the fins, on the, on the uh, pectoral fins, and it got a chunk taken out of its tail uh, literally when I was making that bloodworm video. Like, look at that. Doesn't that look like some sort of, like, fungal growth coming out of the gills? Don't love that. Um, and that one had no color markings until a year and a half old. Um, so there's that. Uh, and then the other bettas in here, there's nine in total. They're all just kind of going around to different spots, hanging out by the, the, the lily and stuff like that. Um, street Trash, welcome. Uh... Yeah, the blue lip uh, buffalo cichlids are really cool, um, and they eat like a beast. I mean, they will bite your hand, they will take off a finger, uh, be careful. But yeah, this female, I can't wait to breed her with, um, you know, we've got a few in here. There's a few that I can't tell for sure, I'm assuming female also, but... Um, I want to cross... Oh, here comes the little amigos uh, coming out of the dark. 
And then also we've got the fire barbs. So if anybody's ever curious, these are a great little barb, and they can turn like b almost like a blood red to a very, very bright orange kind of color. And um, then they're this color in the off when they're not just going crazy about something. Uh, oh, and here comes another two amigos. Maybe I have five. Am I losing my mind? Or did one just dart around to the other side? Uh, but in any case, so yeah, and then they've also got the, uh, um, the lovely catfish. I love these guys. The, uh, cuckoos, uh, or the Petricola synodonis. uh, actually, is that the cuckoo? I don't remember. It's a Petricola synodonis is the Latin name. I forget their common name off the top of my head if it, if it's the, up, it's not the fully upside down one, but there's a few common names and I always get them confused. Um, the short no pattern dorsal plus anal fins and black short pelvic fins. Less shimmer on the gills often indicates female apisto. Males are rarely yellow. Okay, yeah, that helps a lot. Thank you, Mick. Um, Zen Plant Man, what's going on, my friend? Uh, keep on keeping on. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Uh, let's see here. So, Angie says, My female and male cribs have been breeding, have breeding colors for months. She's super pink and fat belly, but no babies ever. I feed foods three times a week and still nothing. In with Congo and Diamond Tetras, uh, and Angels. Um, you know, it could be snails. That's what I have a problem with sometimes in these tanks. And you can see the way the fish have actually gotten very smart. This big male here figured out that the snails, he can keep track of them all crossing the glass. So I was wondering why he excavated all the glass around their cave. Or her cave. It's all for her. Um, and it's so, I mean, he moved a mountain of sand so that he could watch out for the Malaysian trumpet snails. And at night, he'll literally grab them one by one with his mouth and just, like, drop them over, like, yonder. Like, get them out of there. And I, I think that it's because they threaten eating the the, the babies, the, the eggs. And then, like I said, this, uh, not this male, but the male who's under this little fake rock hut. This is the only real fake stuff I have in any tank. This and that fake rock there. Um, but the the there's a big male under this rock, and I think he has Fry. Uh, he's the one who was paired off with her, and in the last live stream, you could see a few Fry coming out of his mouth. And then, to which the guy who hooked me up with these uh, told me, well, they don't mouth brood that we know of, like that anybody knows of. But then again, these guys are very, very new. Uh, the blue lip variety are very new. So it, we don't really know a whole lot about them. So I need to document the fact that they had them in their mouth. I was trying to get a picture. Um, but they do have a big old head and mouth that would make sense that they could store them in there for, for quick getaways and so forth. Um, also, uh, let's see, we've got updates going on. My other erythromicrons, uh, some of them had bent spines and stuff, so I put them in here just to get them away from, like, any CPD or erythromicron that had issues. I put them in with all these resboras because these resboras are completely different and they won't spread, as long as it's not fungal or bacterial, um, they're not going to spread those issues, whatever that wasting disease is that is going around. Um, and basically, it's a bummer, but I have to just wait and see which ones are going to make it. Um, as far as the, the Danio, Danio species, the, the CPD and the um, erythromicron. But they're real pretty in here, um, if we can s find them. I mean, they hide very well. Um, and also the gold tetras are in here, too. Uh, they're hanging out down there towards the back. Another, um, and also we've got the Scarlet Battis in here. Two males. Uh, they killed the one that might have been a female. Uh, found her all mauled up with her gills and, and fins tattered. So I know it was them. I know it was one of them anyways. Um, which is a bummer. I keep losing any one that I think is a female. 
And then uh, these shrimp that Grant sent me, working out super well, super, super um, hardy. Because I've just been doing normal water changes for the most part. And um, uh, Angie says, that's what I thought too. That's why I got the botilla loach to remove snails. Would he eat the crib eggs? I doubt that the botilla loach would. Um, I mean, it might if they were out in the open. But usually cribs hide their eggs under a shelf or in a cave. Um, so you usually don't have to worry about that. Jay Oliver, what's going on? Uh, hey, fish fan. I hope everyone's healthy and do. Uh, hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy. Uh, right back at you, buddy. Um, Good Life Aquatics. Hello, lurking from work as usual. Uh, have everyone's having a nice Friday evening. Right back at you. I haven't. Uh, oh, freshwater uh, ichthyology. You guys, if you haven't checked out this gal's channel, freshwater ichthyology. She is incredible uh not gonna lie it's real nerdy she's like counting uh you know lateral rays on um on fins and uh you know scales and stuff but it's an incredible wealth of knowledge on all things laura caraday um so anything from Corridora to uh, Plecos. And I have a question for Miss Rebecca of Freshwater Ichthyology, um, which is, uh, which is, these are a quote unquote true wink, wink, nudge, nudge, quote marks, I don't know, um, true lemon pleco from the 1970s uh, that Greg Sage had over here that were collected um, from the wild, supposedly. So they're not like a leucistic or an albino ancestress. This strain has been going and documented in photos since 78. And I'm wondering, um, they're the 144, and there's the 144, and then A, and then there's the B, and then there's the just straight up 144. So I was wondering if you know if they've done any DNA and sorted out fact from fiction on these. They've got the blue eyes, kind of gray eyes, but they are cheddar cheese, uh, I mean, to butter, to, to like rich butter yellow, and they have this interesting... Um, I mean, a lot of the ancestors, uh, cirrhosis do this too, but they've got a ton of texture on them, on their armoring. And the males, uh, looks like this one's gonna be a male, maybe? I can't tell. It looks like maybe we're starting to see some onodontodes, but they stay very small. Um, not, my male got to maybe, it took him five, almost five years, uh, their, their father, to get to about yay big. Uh, so I was very curious about that. Valmoda, what's up? How's it going? Um, pair of blue lips got from a place you told me have already spawned, and they're, they do the whole mouth brooding thing, thing going. Oh, right on. That's awesome to hear, uh, that the blue lip buffalo sickle, you got some at the wet spot, huh? Oh, I'm so happy to hear that, Val. And if you've seen them mouth brooding also, then that totally, I mean, then I believe it 100%. Because there's only been one guy who works at the place that has bred them other than my, my buddy Lawrence. And Lawrence doesn't really pay attention to them breeding. Hey, look at these guys are going to have a showdown. Um, often many females of the Angola barbs uh, at my local fish store, red in males show... If they're having very soft water or low pH, the one with red dorsals look like a pale male uh, to me, huh? Oh, interesting. Um, the jumping uh, gene, huh? Yeah, you know, the other thing that's super interesting, freshwater ichthyology uh, slash Rebecca, just so people don't wonder who the heck I'm talking to when they don't see anyone named Rebecca in the chat. Um... You know, the other really cool thing is that they found that gender is independent. It's a floating gene in bettas, or, or rather sex, not gender. Their gender is 
floats all over the place because sometimes they pretend to be, you know, uh, dominant males, subdominant males, females that are acting like males. You got all sorts of crazy things going on. It's like a friggin' David Bowie retrospective to look at a, a group of bettas and what they're up to that way. But, um, Oh, these guys have been so great, by the way. These these red caps from Aquatic Arts, they are just friggin' the best rice fish I've ever had as far as output, and they're just beautiful. Um, but I, here, I'll show you. I've had, um, and I'll talk about the betta gene again in a sec. Um, I've had a bunch of eggs come out. Looks like one fungus up in there. It's kind of hard to see the others, but there's a whole cluster of about 20, and I've had three of the se uh, seven in there three every day that I've had them since day two have um, been been uh, laying eggs or, or bringing eggs to the party. And so I've also collected them and been keeping them in this little critter keeper in here. Uh, that's one spawn today. I mean, look at how prolific she was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 eggs. Uh, plus the one up top, so 19 eggs, all in one little spawn. Um, pretty crazy, uh, pretty crazy, yeah. Um, but, so, back to uh, the Beta Splendens. Yeah, they found out that uh, in captivity, that the Beta, sometime in the 70s, they think, the gene moved from the chromosome, from the X and Y chromosomes, off of that, that determines sex. So you can have, uh, like, X, or what is it, XX males, and or, or actually that might not be right, XY females and XX females at the same time, um, which is interesting. Also what's interesting is this crazy cobalt stiphodon goby. There's no flow in this tank whatsoever he's been in here for almost three years two and a half years since before covid and he is just electric blue he's happy as all get out he's eating all the like moss and biofilm in here uh i don't even see this hardly giving out bubbles and he's just as happy as can be as electric blue and colorful as can be and usually they really need a lot of running water for that um so i don't know what the deal is The cichlid in the thumbnail is is this blue lip guy down here. And they are a very, very rare fish. There's a green lip and a blue lip variety. They're the Buffalo Head Lake Victoria. Even though they're not from Lake Victoria, they're from a very nearby lake. And they were collected by my buddy, um, my buddy Lawrence Kent. He also has an article in a few in uh, Tropical Fish Keeping and in Amazonas about when he collected them, because he also went and collected. Um, and yeah, they're not. That's the interesting thing, uh, is that uh, they're not a lumphead cichlid from West Africa. They're actually from right down in uh, by Lake Victoria, um, like uh, the. I think it's, what is it, the Volta River off the Congo, down by Lake Victoria. They're in between that river and they were in some flooded area uh, on one of the lakes. Um, and then these guys came with them from the same collection trip. And right now the mat's so dark up here. And I know reflections are bad, but we can take a look at my Haplochromus Enigmatochromus. Uh, here's the female that's the dominant. She's uh, yellow and green with metallic blues. And then the male is every color of the rainbow with red as his primary. But when he gets worked up, like when I do a big water change or whatnot, he turns such beautiful colors. He, he almost looks like a five-star general or, or four-star general or whatever. I forget the name of that fish now. Um, and they're real shy. Uh, and then this female is like a bluer color when they're when they're um, subdominant. They do that. And then this is my angelfish that was super super mean, vanity, and she can't be with anybody. So she's in with these mad mad mean cichlids because she can't get along with anybody. She can't play nice with anybody. Nor can this 
freaking golf ball from hell that I decided to take in when I went and spoke in Portland. Um, here, let's try to get him in the picture. He's beautiful. He's cool. He's got red in the tail, but he's down two feet in the tank, so you're losing the red. Let's bring him up. Let's see if we can get him to come up a bit, and we'll see his colors if he does that. Um, but there we go. Hey, Dr. Anthony. So, um, yeah, that is this thing is a monstrosity. It's a convict cichlid. Uh, it's a it's a um, Honduran red point mixed with a uh, blood parrot, and I got them when they were like the size of a teacup platy. Also, by the way, this nearite snail is going on five years old. It's like four years and some change, and it is big. It's like a it's like a ping pong ball almost if you can see it all the way. Um, but yeah, so this is just a weird assortment tank plus some mean cichlids from Lake Victoria that, um, that Lawrence Kent is making me keep as his, uh, CYA in case something happens to his, but I've never gotten them to breed. This was a fully planted, beautiful tank. And, uh, as soon as I put them in it, when I moved to this house, they literally ripped it down to the studs. They took every plant and just pulled it out just because they could. Here's that female. And you can see she's got, like, battle wounds on her side. Because there's another female that's, like, very uh, <clears throat> neck and neck with her for, for dominance. And it's the one that's hiding over there. Look at this guy. He's just a golf ball from hell. I can't handle him anymore. I'm going to donate him to somebody else who likes crappy fish or something. Who likes? I don't want him spawned, though. So even though I have the female, she's actually really small and sweet. Uh, I'm not going to give her away with the male. Because I don't want more of these things in the community. Uh, as interesting as they are and all that jazz, and I'm not blaming the animal, I'm blaming the person. But they are just monsters. She's okay. I mean, she just can't do that much damage because she's only like an inch and a half long. But the male that I got at the same time, that's her age is just a total monster. And by the way, I think I pointed this out, but we have a few baby survivors, even though I've never seen them spawn, but we have a few of the Malungu uh, right here. This male must have had them. Uh, there's a few babies in there, and his nest is under this moss under here. Um, uh... By the way, I'm not sure the Angola barbs. Oh, I know. Freshwater ichthyology. The names are terrible. The the um, the Latin names are terrible. Although, there's no Latin name right now for that blue lip um, buffalo head. Um, I, I think they've been going with, oh, what is it? Ivan Stofi or Ivan something or other. But it's not settled at all. Um, it's one of those things where, like, the Germans were like, let's give it the name. And then uh, no one else agrees. Um, and it turns out that they're not even related to the other uh, buffalo head cichlids that are so common. These ones with the bright blue lip or the bright green lip, depending on their phenotype. Uh, and then the red, and then, I mean, they can turn rainbow colors. They're very smooth-skinned. They, they just move differently. They, they also articulate right at their, um, at their chest, like, um, I guess, where, where their pelvic and, uh, yeah, where their pelvic fins are there, uh, or, or paired fins. That's where they'll, like, fold in half. They'll bend at the shoulder, kind of, if a fish had a shoulder. They'll bend right by the behind the gills, and they'll perch up on a rock like a loach, um, which is kind of cool. But they're definitely used to some flow, and they're also fine without flow. But they're very, very powerful. I mean, I've I've felt him. Like, he's just making a temper tantrum here. Um, he thinks the heater's watch. He thinks the heater's doing something. Uh, but he's yet to really tear apart other fish. He's more just guarding his area. So it's more of a bluff most of the time. So I, so I can't blame him. I don't mind if he's just bluffing. 
and then um again these shrimp the little stardust shrimp are doing well and the um raccoon shrimp are doing well which are um the caradina serrata and then you've got the caradina uh serrata wild uh from vietnam which they're calling cheetahs i think they're they're nailing that down to vietnam and then also we have some super tangerine tigers in here too so and they're all in with a bunch of red rillies which makes no sense but i just wanted to prove that you could do it and there's a bunch of new babies that are caradina in here yeah I don't, you can probably see like a fuzzy orb well that's it that's the that's the baby they're well they're all over but yeah you can kind of see them on the glass but really, um, you know what's kind of an interesting twist of fate, too, is that these Kaite, um, these Kaite, um, epistogrammas are, uh, the only person that photographed them, or the first person to photograph them, rather, was Ivan Mikolji, who is my friend, and he is, uh, the co-founder, uh, with me and his sister Yelka Mikolji, uh, oh, there we see some blue coloring up from the ma from some submission there, uh, with the little female and male uh, rivalry, and then we've got a, a real spunky female here with the black band, and then the black um, the black. I like how the black band extends to their um, pectoral fins. And how the the color is not in the fish tish or the fin tissue, it's in the rays, like the the actual like stiff little whatever they are cartilaginous rays, have the brightest color on this fish, and they're blue and yellow, which stand out. These are like my Ukrainian, my my Slava Ukraini, uh, fish, you know. So. Actually, I mean, look at that. They really are. The, with the blue, the blue's on top of the yellow and everything. These are my Slava Ukraini fish. Which is just glory to Ukraine. It's what they like to yell when they're firing machine guns and stuff. Uh, what else is new? Um, sorry, guys, I lost the chat again. Let me Let me make it down. Uh, yeah, actually, Dr. Anthony, I would love to send you some of the, 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 um, uh, yeah, I would love to send you that DNA from them. Let me just clip you a little, uh, scale. That'll work, right, Dr. Anthony? It wasn't that you're trying to get some buffalo head cichlids from me, right? That would be, that would be untoward, right? Uh... No, I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll happily send you some. I think Lawrence has more babies as we speak because he, he gave them their own 40 breeder at his house. Then we've got some rainbow shiners up here that aren't at all colorful right now. They're in with some CPDs and in with the beta minopina. And they're called that because they have a little pina. No, uh, they're called that because, yeah, <laughs> you want the fish. See, I know. Now, this is a weird fish issue, a fish you. Um, this fish, it's got like a, a bladder problem, an air bladder problem or something, but it's back tail drifts. It's like, I've never seen the yoke, uh, of the, the yoke axis off, or what would that be? Pitch? What? There's pitch, roll, and is it yoke? Anyways, yaw. Yeah. That's the other one. I've never seen, anyways, I've never seen it where the head and the tail, where the tail drifts up to the surface. Very odd. I've had that fish for a long time, and it's been alone in there for a while. Yaw. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brian. I need people to keep me, keep me sane and keep things straight. Hey, look. The beautiful Burmese Inle Loach is out. Does she eat algae? No. Does she do anything other than look pretty? No. But she's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, I just, I think they're cool. When I bought her, she was the size of a CPD. So when she got the size of my freaking pinky, and the male got, like, the size of the knuckle of my, this middle knuckle of my pinky, I was surprised, to say the least, um, and she's actually getting some, uh, excited mating colors because she gets the red and the spots up in the fin, 
but yeah, they only live in Lake Inlay, which is this small lake. Um, it's it's really amazing. And so, same with these thick-lipped gouramis, which I wish these were bigger in the hobby. People need to breed these. I'm going to try to breed these. They're just beautiful. They look like they're glowing, like little tangerines or like little neon signs. I just love them. Um, and uh, then, of course, CPDs are probably one of everybody's favorite nano fish. And then the erythromicrons with the stripes, which are also known as um, emerald dwarf rasboras. They're not in the rasbora family whatsoever. Don't know why anybody thought they were. They even look like a Danio, so I don't know why anybody classified them that initially. Um, and same with the CPD, for that matter. They don't look like galaxy rasboras. Silly people. Um, and then we've got the rosy uh, loaches. We've got a lot of algae again. You already heard that spiel. So I got to clear up the algae in here. The last thing that I was hoping to get is the gravely gara, the gara uh, gravely or graveli. I don't know. I think it's gravely. Um, they're a small, similar to a pandagara, but spotted. And um, they are another little like semi, they're benthic. They hang out on the bottom and they, they hop around. They're a social, uh, they're kind of like Corridoras of, of Myanmar. But, again, there's no catfish in that place other than walking catfish, which are highly suspect as being invasive. So I think I'm going to enter the biotope contest. Obviously, I'm going to move the, uh, the ancestress that's in there eating algae. Uh, and I want this all to grow out. Maize, when you can enter. The Limnophilia aromatica and the um, Bacopa monieri and Colorada. I want those to grow up and flower. And then, ideally... I was having an Indian sword fern, which does grow into Myanmar and Bangladesh and right up into the Shan Mountains. Um, up the Irrawaddy River is how I think it spread, or rather down it. I was going to mount that on this piece of wood coming up and out, but I don't know the plan anymore. I might make a little shelf and have something coming out there. And then I want to, like I said, up the filter, a, a 30 gallon filter. For a 26 gallon tank it's a 30 to 40 gallon rated filter and it's not enough um it, it either needs to be dead center which aesthetically i don't really like um or i need to mount it on the end and have it flow the lengthwise because that would be more natural to like the streams that trickle around lake inlay um another update that i guess i haven't given in a while other than these guys they're all fat and sassy and, and crazy crazy kids uh, the Lake Turkana Jewel Cichlids from Ethiopia. And then, um, let's see here. Wow, you've never seen an Episto Kaite in real life, huh? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, it's an interesting one. Uh, the fact that they don't have the color, um, that they don't have the sexual dimorphism uh, delineated the same way as all the other, well, not all the other, but most of the other apistas is kind of interesting too. So in here, here's my Malawa shrimp colony that's doing okay still, but in here we've also got, there needs to be more room, so I feel like I want to kind of switch spots and put my, um, these are really great though, these are these Thai, uh, multi-barred border loaches, I forget their Latin name off the top of my head, they're a real new species again, uh, but I love them, and they're spawning in my tank. Um, they have been for the last year and a half, and I don't know why. I don't know where. I'll just get extras that are small every once in a while. Um, but up here in the uh, Javanese slash Borneo tank, um, or Malaysian uh, archipelago tank, there's there's some interesting stuff going on other than the quarries. Pretend the quarries aren't in here, uh, and the amber tetras. Forget they're not here. Forget they're here too. <laughs> but um, the shrimp are right. The uh, the glow lights are right, and the uh, purple glow lights are man-made, but they're same species. Uh, the little barbs are right, and then um, where are my? Oh, here they are. The the largest beta species, the macrostoma, 
got those fry and if you guys remember if you guys have watched along with me they were like less than a quarter inch when I got them and I had to keep them completely alone up here Ooh, look who came out this is still actually this is probably my favorite fish right now this is the uh, what is he called Ocarensis aguarensis I think is what how you say the Latin and he's like a, a dwarf Acara variant. But he is blue, purple, yellow, and then he's got a weird crimson highlight on his on his tail fin. The female is very washed out compared to him, but still has the same color patterns. And that electric metallic yellow is a very rare thing in the hobby. Usually yellow is this translucent carotenoid pigment-based thing. Um, with the... Um, Probably, I mean, usually it's the uh, Athetaskin, I can never say that word right, Athetaskin, and look at the eye, it glows with the light at an angle, so that it like shimmers out of its eye socket, it's got these big old eyes, it's got Betty Davis eyes, and just the pattern on the fin of the clear, it almost looks like Madagascar lace, but it's, the fact that it's blue and yellow and purple, oof just i love that fish and it's full grown now it's a wild caught full grown um and somebody in our club had it and got it brought back from um they went to what where was it Suriname, french guiana and a few other places and they brought it back um and it, it's from guiana hence the acara ag guianensis uh and then We've got this little guy who is an Episto trifasciata, uh, which, you know, they're okay. I'm kind of over him. He's real mean. He gets in fights with the female, and she ripped part of his mohawk off in the center. I watched it happen. Uh, oh, they fought over food, so, you know, there's that. Oh, and then all my outdoor pond uh, tubbing fish, uh, the least killies, they're about ready to go out. They can handle the temps now. Um, my different strains, my Endlers and my Bell Bottom strain that I've been working on for a number of years with the, the checkerboard back fin, uh, right here. I'm still having to cull quite a bit of them, uh, but I tried introducing a new gene in this generation, and then there's two other tanks that have a different gene. But check out these coals. They look very wild type, and they're the babies of this guy and that gal yet they threw that so they had some recessive uh endler genes from when i crossed them in this like years ago uh so uh jackson tax who's a local fish keeper that's her screen name uh she actually took them from me four years ago kept them isolated in a in a barrel in her yard or like a horse trough too i think and then she brought me back both of the lineages and i was able to compare them with my with what i had existing which was just awesome um hold on i'm having a mess happen right now my my uh this fern by the way forget it forget this boston fern this fern can jump in a fire for all i care this thing i've given it everything it could want it's gotten fish water it's gotten uh, lights. It's gotten, I mean, it's had lights on both sides of it. It's had a spotlight. It's had red light, blue light, green light, go. And then it's had natural light from the window. And I, I'm just sick of it. It just, it just, it just loses its hair. And, um, the other thing is, uh, I was giving a speech at a fish club and this, uh, since this thing is just losing its hair, its husband got up on stage and smacked me and said to keep its name out my mouth. Uh, in any case, I need to talk to it more. I actually don't talk to it. I mean, I know I'm kind of talkative online, but I come in here and I don't say a damn word. Uh, I know they need just the right humidity. I agree. I've had some Boston ferns work out, but in here, it's like 80% humidity. Well, 60 to 80% humidity. Uh, with the humidifier usually if I have all the tanks doing their thing and it still is like nope throwing all my leaves on the floor like literally watch this everybody 
Did you guys know that Stalin had a pet bird that his family kept at any given time that he had just to to squeeze and shake just to be mean to it to get his anger out? It was a canary. Uh, I thought that was a messed up story and I didn't think it was true. And then like I found a picture of him with the canary in a cage and like a little gilded cage. And I was like, oh, maybe it is true. I don't know. If someone could verify that, I would appreciate it, history buffs. Uh, but I do know for a fact that Hunter S. Thompson heard that story and did the same thing, and he kept a parrot in a cage just to shake it. Well, assholes. Uh, also, these albino uh, paradise fish, or paradise gouramis, whatever you want to call them, they, uh, last year they spawned outside, they did really well. Same with the gold barbs, and same with the rosy barbs. There's a male rosy barb, the females are pretty boring. Um, but yeah. Uh. So, I'm getting too hot in this fish room. I don't know why I have a hoodie on. That and my wife was talking about Indian food, or Thai food. Tindian. Thai and Indian food. Is her car gone? I'm gonna be so frustrated if... Yeah, her car's gone great. Um, well, I gotta get going because I abandoned my wife. I abandoned my son! No, she was all mad about something when I started streaming. And I never got to the bottom of what it was. Because I'm a terrible husband. Um, let's see here. Uh, Senadonis Petricola, Lucipinus, um, yes. Oh, Araguaia is a river. Okay, Araguaia is a river. Thank you. See? Shows what I know. If I didn't have Mick here, I wouldn't know anything about these little dwarf cichlids. Uh, it's really frustrating, though, when I get a cichlid or a fish... And, um, you know, I, I don't know. I think that, um, I say yes to fish frequently because they're like, this is a care species, like, or no one's bred this. And I'm like, oh, I can do it. Um, and, uh, so I need to, I need to get better and not just bringing those home and, than trying to <laughs> breed them without knowing anything about them. But then I go online and like fish base has like a sentence on the species half the time. Uh, and for once I found that the, the big fish that I said is one of my favorite now, um, I wait, Repot the fern. It will help tremendously. Even if you put it outdoors, this will help. Okay, thank you, Joseph. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, um, with the uh, with that that fish, the acarensis or, or whatnot, or, or aguarensis, um, is that um, there's, like, no info that I could find, unless they have another Latin name, too. Um... Uh, but usually if I find a Latin name, I can find good info. But in this case, it was like, found a Latin name, don't have a common name, can't find any good info. Yeah. Other than their water conditions, which, like, that's fine, but that doesn't help me figure anything else out. I mean, I could have probably told you by looking at most fish. I mean, okay, that's a cocky statement, but I bet most people who keep fish a lot would say they have a pretty good guess when they look at a fish what kind of water it comes from. Uh, or what continent it comes from. You, there's some that are tricky, but some are just like, eh, it's going to be a rasbora. It's it's going to want a TDS that's a little high and um, a, a pH that's real low. And a little bit of flow part of the year, cool water part of the year, but mostly hot. And then, you know, you've got your sl slender ones that are a little cooler. you got your tetras that are going to be like, they want warm water and then cool water to spawn and the whole wet dry season thing. 
and they're going to want low, low TDS and low pH probably to neutral for like rainwater. I don't know. I feel like you, you get a feel for uh, fish, even if you don't know the species, you start to kind of understand like, oh, these, these, these body shapes and types probably came from this lineage or at least they're related in some way or there's some co, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, convergent evolution. Um, let's see here. Oh, there is no um, ancestor species L144 around that variant species look completely different to what we see. All lorikarids have onodontodes all over, but larger um, hypertrophied uh, in certain areas. Is that like forked? Um, let's see here. Unless I have the fishes to uh, fish to hand, and they are certain they are wild. I cannot say they aren't common. Bristlenose blue-eyed. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. I mean, I have, I mean, I know that they got them in the wild, but they could still just be a blue eyed bristle nose that is a wild morph. They're bright cheddar yellow though. So they they look like a leucistic super red almost is what they really look like. Um, so in any case, um, uh, let's see here. Who doesn't want nice fish? Uh, collectoritis is always a risk. The Ar the Araguaya in the 80s was called the species uh, Buckelkopf, a uh, humphead in German. Do a search. Oh, okay, that's really helpful, actually. The Germans usually have good info on fish that we don't. Um, you need it live and preserved, saying, uh, oh, okay. Um, it has, they have babies all the time. I could probably get you a baby, but I'm sure sending it to Brazil crazy. I wonder if I did a, a DNA test on it with Dr. Anthony's lab, if you could tell us something about it. Um, anyways, I got to get going. Thanks for uh, putting up with my madness. My wife didn't want to anymore. I got to call her and be like, are you eating dinner alone or are you coming back? Um, so again, I put fish before family. Oh, well. All right, guys. So thank you so much for joining me. You guys are always coming first. Heart. Uh, you guys do the other little half of the heart thing. Uh, and then together, you hold it up to the screen, and it'll be like, oh, I love you guys. Okay. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Um, have a good one. Uh, there's a big fish and plant swap tomorrow in Seattle. It's in the worst neighborhood in Seattle. Literally, there's been seven murders, I want to say is what... I just looked it up yesterday. In that one neighborhood of Seattle this year so far. And there's been like 30 drive-by shootings. I don't know why in the hell we're having a meeting there. Probably because the Eagles Lodge there was really cheap. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but in any case, I'm going to that in an auction. And I might stream some of it because... Our auction a few years ago brought in um, $78,000 in profit for the club alone. Altogether, it was like $146,000 the auction brought in in one day. So we have one of the better uh, auctions in the country in our club. So it should be good. All right, I'm going to get off this stream, smooth things out with my wife. Um, of course, I love her and owe her. I'm just joking around on the stream. But uh, thanks for showing up, guys. I'll talk to you later. Have a wonderful day, and uh, keep it fishy.